Hello, welcome to 5 Minute Retro. Today I've got this little thing here, which is the Sinclair FTV1, or sometimes called the TV80. Uh, I don't really know why it has two different names, but that's what it is. And it is Sinclair's second attempt at creating a pocket-sized television, and undoubtedly the more successful of the two. The first was the MTV1, which was a longer, thinner device and a wider device, about as wide as this, but deep to allow the cathode ray tube, the CRT, uh, to run in the natural form, uh, which is front to back. But what Sinclair did here, with a clever bit of engineering, is to create a tube uh, that fired from the back here, fired its electron from the electrons from the back here, and through a series of mirrors and re reflectors, turned the image through 90 degrees. Uh, and eventually you view it through here, which is actually a Fresnel or Fresnel lens, depending on how you like to say that. And one of the most interesting facts about this, I think, this little telly, is that the display itself behind this lens, which is a, a magnifying lens, is actually 16 by 9 in ratio. In other words, a widescreen uh, uh, tube. Um, but uh, because the TVs of the day and the images of the day were broadcast in 4 by 3, the Fresnel Fresnel lens... Um, was designed such that you would see it in that format, the square format. So even though this was released in 1983, remarkably, it's actually got a widescreen, but that's not how it looks when you actually see it. Unfortunately, uh, this television, this particular one that I own, does not work. I picked it up at a car boot sale in the late 80s, early 90s when it did work. I really wanted one of these as a kid. But as they went on sale at about £80 in 1983, I certainly couldn't have afforded one. But I picked one up later and this worked perfectly. Um, although it has had a few modifications, as we'll see in a second, or at least one major modification, with the power supply, um, which someone, um, whoever I bought it from, or someone down the line, has replaced the original power socket here, um, done some soldering inside and added this little widget here. And it... Um, it, you know, it, it's ugly, but it worked um, instantly. This is the earphone socket here, which you plug in your headphones to have a little listen to your shows. Um, so I can't show you this working, but you would switch it on there and then tune in here. And you can see the little marker there for the, uh, the UHF band that you wanted. Um, obviously, you would need the aerial up. Um, it's this rather giant telescopic aerial. Um, can't really get all that on camera but it, it goes up about three feet um, I'm not going to do that right now um, and on the back of the device if we flip it over um, we'll come back to these two contacts here but this little flap here um, and if you have a little close-up on that I just hold it there just for a second um, it has quite an alarming warning about not taking the cover off for an electric shock and when I was younger I kind of thought it meant this and it was only more recently I found out that's actually a flip-up stand um, so that would allow you, and it doesn't look good on camera, but it would allow you to watch at a, a reasonable angle, like so. Um, okay, if we flip this thing over and go back to these contacts, these were actually um, contacts for a battery, a little sliding battery, which I found out um, was a P500 uh, made by Polaroid, and Sinclair sold packs of three of them uh, back in 1983 for £10. That's about £30 today, so that's about Ten pounds per battery, and they supposedly allow viewing time of about fifteen hours. And obviously, I've got no way to test that. These batteries now are as rare as hen's teeth, and I've never seen one or managed to pick one up. And I'm not even sure if they were rechargeable, so they might literally have been disposable. And the fact that Sinclair was selling them in packs of three suggests that they probably were disposable. Seems pretty ridiculous these days, but hey, even making a battery this thin back in 1983, a lithium battery would have been quite something. Um, so not too much to criticise there. Um, yeah, um, so there's not a lot else to say about it, apart from obviously it was a black and white television. Um, and uh, back in the day in the UK, at least it used to get the three or four main channels. And um, if you own one of these when you were a teenager, which again, as with many of the gadgets I'm showing on this channel, I definitely aspired to do. Uh, you'd have been very happy indeed, but I was not one of the lucky ones till much later. Anyway, this is 5 Minute Retro, so I don't ramble for too long. I just do a little run-through. If you like what I do, please hit the subscribe button up there. And if you want to see more, please click one of the links here. Until next time, happy retro.